Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught software developer, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the biggest pitfalls that a lot of beginners make when they're just getting into software development. And I've been very lucky to meet a lot of people through my mastermind program, through YouTube here, through my Facebook group as well. I've just been able to meet a wide range of people who are trying to get into the field. And when you meet that many people, you start to recognize patterns and you start to see that some people are doing the same things over and over again um, that are leading them to get a lot of frustration and holding them back from getting into the career. And other people are doing the right things that are, that are moving them forward. So today's video, I thought I'd just cover some of the things that I've seen quite a bit of. So by far the number one problem that I see for a lot of people who are just getting into this field is the concept of focusing on lag indicators over lead indicators. Now, this concept comes from a book called Deep Work by Cal Newport, which is a fantastic book. If you're looking to become a software developer or if you're in an in information worker field, it's a great book for just increasing your productivity. But in that book, he talks about lag versus lead indicators. So lag indicator, they're both measures of uh, progress basically, but a lag indicator would be something that you don't have control over, like direct control over. Like for example, maybe you wanna finish your portfolio application this month, but you don't really have any control over that because you can put as much time and effort in as you want, but it really depends on your circumstances, on your skill level, because if you're, if you're not that skilled, it could take longer. Um, if something comes up in your life, if you have an emergency, maybe you'll have to prolong it. Um, so you don't, that would be like a lag indicator, whereas something like a lead indicator measures progress in something that you can control that will help to produce the outcome that you want, to produce that lag indicator to get where you want. So for example, say you're trying to, like I said, build that portfolio application. Well, a lead indicator for building your portfolio application would be study time or coding time. Like how much time are you putting in per week? That would be a, a something that you could measure every single week that you can either tweak up, right? And you can study more, or maybe you're studying too much and you're actually getting burnt out and you can bring it down. But either way, focusing on lead measures is much more uh, empowering it's much more productive because that's really the only thing that you control. If you're hyper-focused on something like, I gotta complete my portfolio application the next month, at, and you're not focusing on how much time you're putting in, then that's a real problem. Now, for some people, this probably sounds terribly obvious, right? Like, if you want to complete your portfolio application, you should spend more time doing it. But my point is that there's a lot of people who are so hyper-focused on getting to the end result right? I'm getting, I'm rushing, as I've said before in another video, like either rushing so much to get where they need to go that they're not focused on what's going to get them there, right? Because you can't just become a software developer by reading a book. If that was the case, then I wouldn't have a YouTube channel. Um, there would not be boot camps out there. It would just be as simple as reading a book. There's quite a bit more to it than just that. So at the end of the day, all you can really focus on and control is how much time you're immersing yourself in code. So people who I see get really frustrated fast are people who are focused on results, results, results. I gotta, I gotta finish this application. I gotta get through this. Whereas people who understand that like, look, I'm just gonna set a certain amount of time to study each week. I'll try to be critical when I plan and prioritize what I'm gonna study but they're more focused on you know, sinking their teeth into problems, getting better at their craft, than this somewhat arbitrary goal of I've got to finish this application in a certain period of time. So there's many different ways of saying this. You know, uh, some people say result, focus on the process over results. That's sort of similar, but look, it, it, to me the most practical way of saying it is focus on lead measures over lag measures or lag indicators because that will give you power on what you can control and not have you focus on things that are outside of your, really outside of your direct control. Another big pitfall that I see for a lot of people who are getting into this is just unhealthy, unrealistic, inappropriate expectations about how long it's gonna take for them to become a software developer. Now, there's a, probably a lot of people to blame for this, you know, YouTubers, maybe like myself, even though I try my best to never ever over exaggerate or exaggerate or uh, give misleading claims about how long it's gonna take. I really try to do my best to give my best expectations of it. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of people out there thinking that they just, you know, take a course, or if they study a little bit, that they're gonna become a software developer. So that leads to a lot of frustration. A lot of people will get into this and they start running into Roblox early on and they're like, this isn't, this isn't easy, like, what's going on? I, I need to find the right tutorial, I need to find the right book, and they start you know, f being frantic and they're, they're jumping all over the place, they get demoralized, they end up quitting, then they start a month later, and then it's just like all over the place, it's very frenetic. 
And you see that a lot. I see a lot of people who are, you know, end up dropping out, but then they get back into it and they drop out and they get back into it because they just never had a proper expectation from the beginning about how long this was actually gonna take. When I started, I was just lucky. I don't know why I thought this, but I put myself at the bottom of the barrel. I said like, look, I'm starting out brand new, beginner, my expectations are very low. I knew that, like the one thing that I had that probably helped me along was that I knew that most people, are, in my mind I believe that most people are cut out from the same cloth, that software developers who are in the field aren't some special wizards, they aren't like brainiacs, they don't have IQs of like 150 plus, they're all just like these brilliant people, and that I couldn't somehow do that. I figured they just had a process that they followed step by step to get where they were gonna go, and that anyone could basically follow what they were doing. And so that's that's basically what I, I trusted. And so for me, it wasn't about doing it in a year. I would have waited two or three years. I really would have waited how long it was gonna take. I would have worked my ass off, and I did, but it was never about doing it within a certain period of time. If I had put that pressure on myself, I think it would have been pretty miserable because I, I don't know, I just like, I, the time constraints are just like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, why are you trying to do this so hard? Like, why do you have to get this so hard? Like, where are you running to go? Like, once you get to your first job, like then what's the next time constraint that you're gonna put on yourself? It's always like, gotta get it now, gotta get it now. Whereas like relaxing a little bit, like enjoying the actual work of software development is just enjoyable. You can put that pressure on yourself to do things and make sure that you're working hard, but like I, there's gotta be a separation between the pressure to succeed at all costs versus the, the sinking your teeth into the, the work, like making sure you're doing deep, constructive, like focused work. Like there's gotta be a, a shift there if you're really gonna make it in my opinion. And the last thing that I see a lot of people do is they just, they just switch around too much from technology stacks and programming languages in general. So a, a really typical scenario that I'll see is um, when I'm asking somebody about their their you know their track record in, in getting into software development, they'll say something like, uh, you know, I started studying Python at first for about a month, and then I moved over to JavaScript, and after about a month of that, I went to C++, and after that, I went to you know C Sharp, and it was just like this cycle where every month it was a new programming language that they they were going to learn. And if you dive deeper into that, typically what happens is they're either watching a tutorial on Udemy or whatever one of the big sites are, maybe even YouTube, or they're reading a book. And once they get to the end of that book or tutorial, they are faced with a blank slate of like what to do, right? They're like, okay, the, the training wheels are off, what should I do? And at that moment, they kind of, they maybe they start watching YouTube a little bit and somebody mentions, oh, try this programming language or try this framework. And they'll they're like, you know what? I'm gonna switch gears because I learned Python in the book or I learned Python in the tutorial. I'm gonna go to the next thing. Well, the problem with that is that they never took the time to actually use that programming language to build something from scratch to solve real world problems, which is what a programming language is all about. I can't tell you how many people I've had come in the mastermind program and I basically tell them like, look, you're gonna build this. And they're like, um, you know, they've done tutorials before, but they're just like, I don't know how to do that. And I'm like, yeah, I know, that's what we're gonna walk you through. We're gonna walk you through the process of problem solving um, and taking something, a, a complex piece of functionality, breaking it down into steps, and then working through each one of those and problem solving each one of those. It's awesome, it's fantastic, and it's like one of the biggest growing experiences you, you'll have as a developer is when you have to uh, complete an assignment all by yourself without having a tutorial, it's fantastic. But that's what you're going to do when you're getting on a job. Like there, you're, 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 you're gonna get, receive some sort of work item that's gonna say like, I, I need you to do this, and it needs to be able to done, and it needs to complete these three things or four things, and you have to figure out like how, what's the best way to do it. And if you've never done that, if you're used to tutorials, then your first reaction will be like, I need to go watch my tutorial. So you want to take the programming languages that you learn and apply it to something, some project, some sort of challenging application that you could build. And that way you'll get actual real world experience that will cement your learning and you'll have a much better understanding of the programming language, not just at some surface or superficial level. All right, you guys, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed those pitfalls for beginners. I hope it helps you along and helps you maybe understand like where you're falling short. Um, if you are interested in becoming a software developer and you are having some of those struggles, I'm running a mastermind program for people who are really committed, who are highly motivated to becoming a software developer and changing their careers, changing their lives. So if you're interested in that program, 
book a call with me at andysterkwitz.com forward slash call. During that call, we'll talk about a few things. Number one, we'll talk about your biggest obstacles right now from getting you started in your career. We'll talk about where you wanna take your career in terms of your goals and dreams. And then of course, we'll talk about whether the mastermind program is a good fit. We can talk about the next steps as well. And if you're not interested in that, totally cool. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all the support guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you later.